I'm going to show you how to get buttery smooth time lapses of your resin prints, just like the ones you see here. The ingenious tool that makes it all possible, and even how to craft one yourself for just a few bucks. So resin 3D printers pose an interesting dilemma when it comes to getting cool time-lapse shots. The problem is, until recently, there wasn't a way that you could trigger your camera to take a photo every time a new layer begins. The best you could do was try and set the interval time between shots to sync up with each layer, but inevitably over the course of a long print, you're pretty much guaranteed for the two to fall out of sync, and what you would end up with is something erratic like this. But thankfully there is a fix to this problem, and while I'm sure many of you already into resin 3D printing are likely aware of this, for everyone else, that ingenious solution is the resin lapse cable. What the hell is a resin lapse cable? Well, in short, you stick one end into your camera, the other in your printer, and now your camera knows every time a new layer begins and snaps a shot. But how does it work? Well, that's why I think this is so ingenious. The cable on one end is just a standard 2.5mm jack that you should be able to plug into most cameras. But on the other end, there's a little sensor called a photoresistor that detects changes in light. So by simply pointing the sensor somewhere where it will see the printer's internal UV light, the camera will take a photo. This ensures that the photos are taken at exact intervals in sync with the print layers, giving you that silky smooth time-lapse result. Now I can't mention resin lapse and not mention the great Uncle Jesse, whom we have to thank for this fantastic little creation. Uncle Jesse, if you don't know, has an absolutely amazing channel here on YouTube all about 3D printing, and resin lapse is his brainchild. I highly recommend binge watching all his stuff if you haven't already, and I'll leave links in the description to his channel, his resin lapse video, and his store where you can pick up a pre-made cable for yourself and support a cool creator while you're at it. But I mentioned at the start of this video that I'd show you how to make one of these yourself. And so real quick before we get to that, bolster your defenses with the Imperial Outpost. This indomitable structure of plasteel and ferrocrete will make a fine addition to any gaming table. Inspired by the retro hammer of yesteryear and suited to filament printers, this outpost comes as a multi-part kit that snaps together with open lock clips and drop in place parts. And if that's not enough high ground for you, then there's also the comms tower. This tower can be printed in combination of filament and resin, but it's entirely resin friendly too, and pre-supported of course. So be sure to head on over to my Colts 3D store where you can pick up these files and in doing so help support the channel. All right, now let's take a look at how to DIY a resin lapse cable. I'll include links in the description as well for all the parts and equipment used during this video. Really, there are only two things you're gonna need to pick up. The first is a GL5528 photoresistor. Now, I'm sure there are loads of these resistors that will work as well, but I'm not an electronics expert, so I can't give you a list of viable options. However, I can confirm that this one works and seems to be pretty abundant, so hopefully you shouldn't have any issues finding these. I grabbed a lot of 10 for just a couple of dollars. The next thing you'll need is an aux cord with at least one 2.5 millimeter TRS connection. TRS stands for tip, ring, and sleeve, and is easy to spot by the two bands that break up the metal contacts. I'm an idiot and ordered two half meter cables, so don't be me and place your order at 8am in the morning after being up all night. Order longer cables. 1.5 to 2 meters should work well. A quick note about cameras, make sure your camera has an intervalometer input before attempting this, as many newer cameras today have ditched this feature in favor of inbuilt interval timers. If you don't have a camera with an intervalometer and are really determined to get time-lapse shots like these, then consider picking up an old DSLR like this Canon 700D for the job. They can be had really cheap used, they take amazing photos, and for our purposes, we don't need fancy modern auto tracking or video capabilities, we just need a good stills camera. So first thing you want to do is make a clean cut to remove one end of your cable. You could use a sharp pair of side cutters like these, or a fresh razor blade would work best. It's important this cut is clean, because the wires inside are very delicate and wound with fibers, which, if we're going to have any hope of soldering successfully, need to be as undisturbed as possible. Also, if your cable only has a single 2.5mm TRS jack like mine, 
then be absolutely certain that you don't chop that one off. The best way to deal with the outer sleeve is by using your soldering iron. Unless you have very sharp and precise wire strippers that don't disturb the wires inside, then go with this method. There should be three wires inside your cable. And for our purposes, we only need the tip and sleeve wires. If they're color coded the same as mine, then the tip will be the green wire, the ring, the red wire, and the sleeve, the gold wire. If not, you can use a multimeter to identify them, uh, but don't worry if you don't have a multimeter, the photoresistor is non-polarized, meaning it doesn't care which legs get wired to the tip and sleeve. It'll work in either configuration, and if I figured the probability right, then you have a 50% chance of wiring it correctly on your first try. So if it doesn't work, just disconnect one of the two wires and switch it to the third wire and you should be golden. So what you want to do here is carefully spread the wires out. You don't want to risk them fraying at all. And now carefully stick the tip of a wire into some molten solder and hold it there for a couple of seconds. The solder should flow into the wire and burn back the fabric threads, allowing you to then draw the iron along the wire to help the solder flow. With the wires now tinned, it's a good idea to do the same for the leads on the photoresistor. Before connecting the resistor to the wires, I put some heat shrink tube over the leads to help insulate them from one another. But in hindsight, I think a tiny bit of electrical tape would have been better because the heat shrink tubes added a lot of bulk. And all that's left to do now is connect up the two leads from your photoresistor to the cable. Again, the resistor doesn't care which leads get which wire. And once that's done, all that's left to do is insulate the two leads from one another, seal up the whole thing with some heat shrink tube and give it a test. I hope you found this one useful and thank you to Uncle Jesse for the cool idea. I hope you don't mind me spilling the beans on how to make these yourself. Also, I've got to give a shout out to Little Bit Tech Info. Back when I first attempted making one of these cables, I could not for the life of me figure out how to tin those wires. And his video was invaluable for getting past that hurdle. So thank you, good sir. All right, go make some cool time lapses and I'll see you all again soon.